Hey there everyone, this is Travis here from Paid Memberships Pro. Today I'm talking about membership site level names and subscription options and um, I wanted to make this video because this is quite a popular blog article on our site. It's one that I think flies under the covers in terms of um, a lot of people don't actually spend time thinking about their name and sp thinking about you know whether or not it's even important they just kind of like grab one from the hat and go like cool this makes sense and then you know we move on from there but the reality is uh, a membership level name can actually have a bigger impact on your site and your membership offering than you might even realize for example a lot of members uh, use their membership level as a sort of a badge of honor or badge of pride you know like I'm a member to this particular membership site it shows my loyalty and um, you, it can also affect your conversion rate so if you just have a very simple basic membership level which in many cases might be fine it might not convert quite as well as something that has a little bit more of a creative name so if you want, we cover all of this, what I'm about to tell you in the video uh, on this blog post, how to name your membership level or subscription option. And we also have a really nifty tool, a litmus test um, at the bottom of the blog post, which you can actually go ahead, enter in your membership level name, and then get an idea of how it reads uh, on Paid Memberships Pro. So I've used the example for Ultimate over here. And as you can see, it reads pretty well. You've selected the Ultimate membership level membership level ultimate etc this just helps because initially you might want to have something like the ultimate uh membership for example right oh i deleted ultimate so let me just go ahead and enter that in so we have the ultimate membership and as you can see it doesn't quite read as well you have selected the the ultimate membership membership level so this little test is a great tool that can help you determine a membership level that is right for you so let's get talking about some of the different kinds of membership level names and hopefully this will you know be a bit of a guidance tutorial that will help you get your creative juices going and figure out which membership might be right for you so let me start off with netflix.com Netflix has a tiered or hierarchical kind of uh, naming structure where it just implies the more you pay, the more you get kind of structure. It's a very common one and it's something that we see all the time over on, uh, on membership sites. So as you can see over here, they have basic, standard and premium and obviously the higher you go the more features you get so if you start off with a 899 uh, basic membership you're going to get most all of their features or benefits except the uh, availability of hd video and ultra hd and then uh, as you go higher to the premium content as you can see over here we get the number of devices that can watch netflix at any given time increases and we essentially have access to all of their video display you know uh, whether it's hd or ultra hd so we can actually go ahead and choose that if we wanted to so What's great with this is it is very simple and it's very easy to understand for your members. What's maybe not as great is that there's very little creativity in this. And essentially, you know, it's just a stock standard. Are you on the basic or are you on the premium? It doesn't really encourage that kind of community cultivation that I was speaking about earlier. Um, moving on. Let's go over to adobe.com. So Adobe is a great example of user type naming. Um, so this is where you will essentially identify what kind of user you are. And as you can see here, they have individuals, business, student and teacher, and then even schools and universities. And that will essentially determine which package you would go on. Um, I think like, for example, students and teachers get uh, quite a significant cutback uh, discount of 60%. And if you're an individual, you know, then you can actually go ahead and just choose whichever uh, package is most likely to suit you. Again, very straightforward. And it is 
Um, quite popular if you have a broad spectrum of different kinds of users, entities, businesses, etc. that will be using your service. This can make it a little bit easier. I just identify who I am and then I choose the package uh, that's right for me. Let us go over to Shutterstock. So Shutterstock is great if you have any kind of stock photography or video needs. And this is what we call our pricing or payment term kind of model. So as you can see over here, uh, I can select the amount of images I need, and then I can select the kind of uh, payment term or payment structure that I want to opt in for. So if I want a monthly no contract, then I'm going to pay $49 per month. Uh, but if I want to be annually billed on a monthly basis, it's going to go down to $29 per month. And uh, if I want, I can just do an upfront up payment of an annual amount of $300 per year. Why you would want to go for this particular model is if you have a one service kind of, you know, feature. There, there's no additional features, options, benefits, things of that nature, but you just want to give people the ability to pay how, what in a way that makes them feel comfortable. So this is great. I actually quite like this kind of option because you might have users who don't want to commit, but they also want to use your service and they might just want a month to month billing. If I use something like Shutterstock, for example, I always just take the month to month option with there where there's no contract because for my needs, I generally don't need an ongoing subscription to something like this. And if there was only something like an annually build option, then I'd probably look elsewhere. So just keep this in mind. If you have a one size kind of fits all membership offering, give your members a little bit of play and a little bit of options in terms of pricing it. And, um, you know, as you can see over here, what's worth mentioning, if there is a month to month, no contract option, it's generally going to be a little bit more expensive than if someone actually takes a committed offering. So next up, we are going to be talking about nonprofit organizations and associations. Now, these particular entities often have slightly different needs to membership. You know, it's very important uh, for them to cultivate a community for sure. And also get donations and funding to help them, you, you know, make headway in whichever cause they're working for. This one is liveforanother.com and uh, they are a great nonprofit organization. Let's go over to Spread Kindness to see what they have named their membership offerings. As you can see, we've got how much was raised. So they actually have a slightly more creative uh, approach to their naming con uh, naming strategy. They've got Happy Investor, Joy Investor, and Glee Investor. So I believe with this particular nonprofit organization, the whole cause is that they are trying to help people who are uh, perhaps very ill uh, try spread a little bit of kindness and joy into their lives. So as you can see, the higher tier I go, I'm assuming the better of a job I'm going to do to increase this person's happiness level. So if I start off here, I'm going to be a happy investor. I'm going to actually uh, over here, I'm going to introduce joy into this person's lives. And then right over here, I'm going to be, you know, just injecting a whole lot of glee. And, you know, that's a great way to actually think about stuff. So as you can see over here, they've taken a little bit more of a creative approach. And this is the kind of naming that I was talking about where I would be very proud to consider myself a Glee investor for something like this. If you just had something like basic pro and ultimate, it might not translate as well. Great. So I hope that gave you a little bit more information and guidance on what to think about when naming your membership level. There is a lot to think about. Don't be afraid to get creative, but obviously if it, it must be appropriate to your audience as well, which is something worth thinking about. If you have a very, you know, corporate professional lawyer, 
um, insurance kind of environment. You might not want to be super creative unless that is it ties in with your brand. So there are a couple of like common sense tactics that you might need to use when naming your membership level. But by all means, if you have the ability to be slightly more creative, slightly more enticing, then you should totally do that. Cool. So if you want, check out paidmembershipspro.com and have a look at how to name your membership level or subscription options. Kim does a great uh, job of just going through all of this in detail. We also have more information on some of the uh, options that you can use for the different kinds of tiers and the different kinds of naming conventions that you might be considering and again check out the litmus test at the bottom of this if you have a membership level name that you want to try out and then you can just kind of see it before you actually commit to it.